I want to talk about these paint depth gauges like this one here that I use and I want to kind of clarify what these things are good for and what they're not necessarily good for. Now this is one that I use, this is a X-Tech, what is this, a CG204 model number. And these are fairly cheap, you can get them on Amazon for a couple hundred bucks. Uh, if you're not familiar with these, this is basically it's a gauge, it's got a sensor on the bottom. And you would put this onto your paint and this gives you a reading, it measures off of the metal. And you can set it to microns or mils, whatever you want to do. And it, it's giving you a ballpark reading of how thick the painted surface is on that metal. Now these cheaper ones, they don't work on, like on plastic, you won't get a reading on there. Uh, certain substrates, it's not going to work, it's just metal. And so you would use this before you polish a car to get an idea of how much material you have to work with. And because uh, obviously the, one of the biggest fears when you're doing any kind of paint correction is, is busting through the clear coat. So to me, these things are really helpful tools because in my opinion, before you polish a car, uh, the more information you can get on that vehicle's history, the better. You, you can't have too much information about the history of that paint job before you work on it. A lot of people will treat these things like you can, you can take that number to the bank and that is a great way to bust through the clear coat when you're polishing a car. I don't trust these things 100% and neither should you. Let me explain. I'm not just talking about these cheap ones specifically. I'm talking about paint depth gauges as a whole. Matt did a video on the Obsessed Garage channel. He did a whole series with Andy Ward and Jason Kilmer from KXK Dynamics. What they did was they wanted to do a test and uh, get a reading beforehand of how deep the paint was or how thick the paint was on a hood. And so they measured it. And then I think they went as aggressive as like a thousand grit or 1500 grit sandpaper and stepped it up, I think all the way up to 3000 or 5K and then measured it again. And they were using like a, one of the more expensive depth gauges that I think it was a Defelsco or whatever that one's called. And somehow the readings were higher after they had done a bunch of aggressive sanding. And so I'm thinking even if a gauge, if one of these gauges is perfectly accurate 99% of the time, that's not enough for me. I'm putting the whole picture together when I'm polishing a car. I, I want to spend some time investigating the history of the car. Has it been polished? Is it original paint? How old is the car? Is it kept indoors? Is it kept outdoors? That kind of stuff. It all comes together to give you the, the entire picture of what you're dealing with. Just one reading on a gauge alone is not enough. So recently I had one case where I was using this exact gauge. Uh, I was working on a 78 Datsun 280Z, or sorry, I guess I should say Z, because, you know, Canadian gearhead and everything. Some of you guys make fun of me for not being Canadian enough with my accent. <laughs> but I was working on this Datsun, and uh, so I'm going through, and I'm getting all of my readings, because I want to get an idea of what's going on. I'm just going like this, running through everything. And you can see on my car, the readings are fairly consistent. They're kind of all in the same ballpark, right? Now that car, I would measure in one spot and it would read 230 microns or something. I would go one inch over and it would be 1100 microns. Like massive gaps, massive differences that it wasn't consistent at all. And so as I went over the car, I kept on getting these weird, crazy readings. And of course the first, the first warning sign is you're dealing with a 40 year old vehicle. Anytime you're dealing with a vintage car, even my car here, this was this is a 1991. This is already old enough that it's seen some crap. Any car that gets old, it's going to have some stories to tell. I don't care how well cared for it was. Stuff happens. And so this Datsun had already been restored. It was uh, an aftermarket paint job on it. And judging by the rest of the car, the, the restoration job was really well done. But I'm getting these crazy readings. And now keep in mind, these depth gauges, the way they work is they measure off of the metal. And so that measurement, if it, like say, just on the roof of this car, which by the way, this paint is so thin, now you've just seen why I can't buff this car anymore. 78 microns, that is, <laughs> there's nothing left on this thing. But what that's doing is that's, that's reading off of the metal. So that's including any filler, uh, primer, base coat, clear coat, that's all getting grouped into that one measurement, right? And so you don't know how much of that number is clear coat. 
So I'm getting these crazy high readings and somebody that's not thinking it through might be thinking, oh, the paint is super thick here. I can grind till the cows come home. I've got nothing to worry about. Well, guess what? That car is full of Bondo in some spots. Those high readings, that's the Bondo below the paint surface that's giving you those high readings. It might read 1100 microns. You might only have 100 microns of clear coat on that. It's all filler and primer and base coat. And so it's gonna give you a false sense of security. You get that big number, you think, I'm totally safe. I don't even have to worry about what's going on. And guess what? You are gonna break right through that clear coat and you are paying to repaint that car. Now, another interesting story in terms of these paint gauges that happened to me recently, I was working on a brand new CVO Harley Davidson Road Glide, which if you're not familiar, it's about a $50,000 motorcycle, just a beautiful bike. Uh, and it was brand new. I think the owner rode it maybe a, a couple times since he picked it up from the dealership. And so I'd already cleaned it all up and everything. I was just kind of going over it, examining it with a light to see what kind of defects were in the paint from the factory as far as scratches and stuff go. And I noticed on the rear fender, I found some holograms, which is what you would typically find after using a rotary polisher with like an aggressive wool pad and then not finishing it down properly afterwards. And so I'm thinking right off the bat, my spidey senses are tingling and I'm thinking, okay, so somebody's already been here before me and this is a brand new bike. And even still, somebody's been here before me. So I'm thinking, okay, well, is this whole bike like this? Is this just how Harley Davidson finishes down these fancy paint jobs? Cause the CBO bikes come with really like custom looking paint jobs. They're just amazing looking. And so I looked over the rest of the bike and I didn't see holograms anywhere. It was just on the rear fender. I've already caught myself. I already see the warning signs of something going on. Now I'm going to grab the depth gauge and just, I'm going to, I'm going to get that information and add that to the puzzle. And sure enough, I was getting readings all over the entire bike for like between 130 to 140 microns. That rear fender was hovering around hundred microns. And so that I didn't go off of that number just on its own to give me an idea of what was going on. I used it to confirm what I already had a feeling was going on and that somebody had already polished that fender probably before it ever even left the factory. But I needed to know that and I needed to be clear on what was going on because if there was other scratches in that fender that I thought, oh, I'm just gonna compound these out real quick and uh, it's a brand new bike, what could go wrong? I know there's lots of paint on there. Well, guess what? Even on a brand new bike, that depth gauge saved my bacon. And uh, I made sure that I just hit that fender really lightly, even though there was enough material still to work with to polish it and it wasn't badly damaged. It didn't have a whole lot of scratches in it anyways, but I'm still thinking this is a brand new bike. Like the owner, they might, I don't know if they're planning on keeping this thing for 30 years. And uh, any vehicle is bound to get scratched over time. And you want to make sure you're leaving yourself enough room to be able to do future paint corrections. You don't want to, right off the bat, grind the paint down as thin as this car is right now. And then you're screwed if something happens, somebody bumps up against it. Well, guess what? You got nothing left. So in my opinion, if you're serious about getting into paint correction and you're be working on, especially on other people's cars than your own, I think that these gauges are, are definitely worth buying. I think, especially these cheaper ones, 200 bucks or something. Uh, but I think you need to be careful and these things can definitely give you a false sense of security and uh, make you think that you can be a hero if you want. But it, in the, the world of pain correction, it is so easy to go from a hero to a zero, man. You don't wanna be going to a body shop to fix one of your screw ups because you trusted one of these gauges when you shouldn't have. Most importantly, you have to be looking for the warning signs of thin paint. Um, you got to trust your gut. You got to go off of the history that the owner of the car tells you that this thing's been compounded 10 times. You, obviously you're not going to have much left to go with. Uh, if you're looking at a paint job, I mean, my car is pretty level because it's such thin paint, but if you're, if you're looking over, say this entire hood and the whole hood has a certain level of orange peel on it. And then there's some kind of a scratch that looks like somebody has kind of leveled down to improve a little bit. And if you're looking at where that scratch is, the orange peel is gone, you know that's thin paint. I don't need a gauge to tell me nothing. That's thin paint. That's DEF CON zero right there. Red alert. You got a paint depth gauge, you put it on here, it says 400 microns, you can grind till the cows come home. You come over here and you're looking on these edges and you see, oh, it's burnt through on those edges somewhere. Somebody's already hit this with a wool pad like crazy. DEF CON zero, red alert. That's thin paint, man. I don't care what that gauge says. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking like, well, it's just because you're using these cheap gauges, you got to get one of those fancy expensive ones. 
And yeah, there are expensive ones that will break down each layer. Like you'll, it'll tell you how thick each layer on the surface is. And maybe those are more reliable. I don't know. I, I'm not spending 4,000 bucks on a gauge just to find out that it's no more accurate than these cheap ones though. So the moral of the story guys, these gauges are definitely worth buying, definitely worth using, but don't just blindly trust the number that they spit out at you because that's a great way to bust through a clear coat or whatever paint surface you have. When I was working on that Harley, it came in really handy to help me figure out the history of what has gone down and why one panel didn't match the others. The biggest thing is if you're going to be especially doing any kind of aggressive compounding or sanding, you got to trust your gut. There's just, there's no replacement for experience when it comes to stuff like this. You got to know when to stop, guys. Uh, sometimes you just got to improve things and not completely remove them. Sometimes you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them, man. That's, that's the... That's the game we're playing here, and sometimes it is a bit of a gamble, so if you're ever in doubt, always stop early. You can, you can always polish more. You can't polish paint back onto the car. So if you're ever in uh, any kind of doubt that you're thinking something just doesn't feel right, stop. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you on the next one. And stay tuned. That full Datsun video is coming up, and the full video of that Harley-Davidson as well. Uh, showing how I apply G-Technic ceramic coatings. Those are both coming up. I just got to find time to edit them So I'll catch you on those. Take it easy guys uh -huh.